What's up YouTube? This is John Helm with Helmwood Shop and Smithy back with another knife making video. This is part two of the D-Guard Confederate Bowie Knife project build. Thank you for joining me. I was debating on which type of steel to forge this blade out of and I chose the O1 tool steel. And really the main reason that I chose this is because of the size of it. The other pieces of steel were two and a half inch and two inch thick pieces of round stock. This is I think seven eighths of an inch by one and a half inches. So it's still a pretty big chunk of steel to make a knife out of, but it's much more doable than the other pieces were. Without further ado, let's forge a blade. Under the sea, absorbent in yellow and porous is he. This is really a pain in the ass, and I knew it was going to be when I started. But I figured I'll test myself and see see what I can do. Normally, I would definitely want to use a piece of steel that is much closer to the finished dimension of the blade that I was forging. I initially bought this piece of steel for making tomahawks, not for making blades. And it's a perfect size for that, but I just don't find myself making tomahawks all that often. Not as frequently as blades anyway, just because uh, tomahawks don't really sell that well, right? However, in this endeavor I have learned some lessons, and I would like to share those with you now. Lesson number one, you're going to need a ton of fuel on hand if you have a piece of steel this big to break down. It's gonna take a lot, so make sure that you stock up on it before you even begin this project. Lesson number two, you're gonna to need to start off with way more steel than you think you're going to because you're gonna lose so much of it to scale. Number three, do not use the hammer that you think is going to move the metal the fastest because that is gonna be a hammer that weighs a lot. Your elbow will thank you for using the hammer that you have that is the most comfortable for you to use. Lesson number four, until you get it forged down to about 3 eighths of an inch, don't even bother hitting it if it's not bright yellow or orange hot. But the most important tip that I could give you <laughs> is just don't do it. It's stupid. Just buy a piece of steel that is the appropriate size for the project that you're making. You'll save money in the long run, even though you might have to pay more money for the smaller pieces of steel. Well, that was hard, <laughs> but I finally got this forge down into about the size of a large leaf spring. I'd say it's about 5 16ths of an inch thick, probably around 2 inches wide, 
took me two and a half hours and 25 pounds of charcoal to get here. So I'm gonna go inside, put some ice on my wrist, and I'll come back later, get this thing forged into a blade. It is the next morning. I got up early, worked out, ate my Wheaties, I'm ready to go. Let's forge this blade. I'm gonna go ahead and draw out the tang just to make this thing long enough that I don't have to use tongs on it. So I'm gonna start off by isolating the tang material and forging in the shoulders off the corner of the anvil. Right there looks good. As luck would have it, I developed a crack right where the tang meets the ricasso. So I had to cut it off and I'm gonna have to forge that tang out again. No big deal, I have plenty of steel left, but it's annoying.
Well, I ran out of charcoal, so I resorted to forging with wood scraps, which luckily I have a lot of them and they're all hardwood. But right now I'm just trying to finalize this profile and get it straightened. I was going to forge in the bevels, but I've decided, since I've already gone through almost 50 pounds of charcoal, that I'm just going to grind them in. Also, I have a ton of metal here, and if I draw this out to the dimension where I'm not grinding away a whole lot of material, I'm going to wind up with a blade that is much longer than I was planning on, and I don't have a quench tank to accommodate that. I don't have a lot of things that I need in order to do that, so I think that this actually is a better decision. Also, when I grind out bevels, it's a lot easier. You're starting with a flat piece of steel, and it just makes things go a lot more smoothly. Now it's all straight, I'm just gonna take a minute and mark off my high spots with a piece of chalk so that I can go in and grind those down with an angle grinder. And now we take it to the boat grinder. Look at all that tang. Woo, that was work, son. But I have here in my hands a really the second I start recording these damn dogs. I'll be back. Yo, what's up? Oh, yeah, I have a huge boon I said uh, I made it. No big. Anyway, uh, so I ground this flat and it looks nice. I had to change the profile a little bit. What I wound up doing is I just straightened it out a little bit. It had, it was just a little bit too curvy here and there. We all know how that is. One time I heard a dude say, uh, the blades that we make are reflections of ourselves. And I thought, man, stop trying to sound cool. You know, <laughs> we hang out in the garage and we grind metal into a, into a cool looking shape. That's it. However, this knife, 
just like the dude who built it after going on a weight loss plan on the grinder, still weighs significantly more than it should. So I'm gonna take the bevels back pretty far and I think I'm gonna do the false bevel, I'm gonna start it down lower than I was originally anticipating just to take some more weight out of the end of the blade. That way it's not so forward heavy. I'm also going to probably thicken up the guard and definitely gonna add some extra weight onto the pommel because either way this is gonna wind up being a pretty heavy blade. I just want it to be well balanced so it feels good in the hand and you can actually move with the blade instead of it just being like a baseball bat. But that's all I'm gonna to do today. I'm tired, I need to go inside and work on the honeydew list. So join me next time, we're gonna put bevels in this thing and harden it. These knives have lots of really good uses, like picking your teeth, you can just get in there like, ah, get a little scratch. Um, oh, also seppuku. Why are you still watching this? <laughs> And why am I still filming? I don't know. Maybe I'm just, maybe I'm lonely. You ever think of that? No, you only think about yourself. All right, I'm going sad.